And, you know, at the beginning it was kind of boring, but then it became more and more and more interesting. And it was such a great, you know, part of organizational culture. People learned to respect knowledge of each other more because they learned, oh, I didn't know that you guys do such interesting and important stuff. And second, people who prepared their presentations, as you know, they learned even more about their own job because they had to find the, the uh, latest publications, they had to find the latest foundings, they had to find how to present them in the most interesting and um, inspirational um, style. So when they prepared their PowerPoint presentation about the part of their job, it worked for them. But when they presented it to other people and started communication with other people, with other departments, it worked for everybody and sharing this knowledge. Think about this one, how you can, um, how you can establish this uh, simple rule of uh, sharing knowledge. It's just one of examples, but you, I'm positive that you have many other examples uh, which you can share with other people, how knowledge can be um, shared. Another example is one professional service firm I used to work and um, it was business school and but executive business education school, not like uh, uh, university-based uh, business school. So uh, several people uh, possessed unique, they kind of, they were called gurus and they had senior, they were senior faculty members, senior lecturers, and they possess special kind of combination of knowledge, and actually it, it was the image, because of them, the image of this business school was really strong, because they had one star, one guru in marketing, really, really star, one guru in management, in finance, in uh, operational management and in accounting. And this team of five strongest people in the country was very, very strong. And each of them had their satellite junior faculty and staff. And suddenly, in 2003, four of five people left the company. They left not because they didn't like the company, they just grown up of this company. They just, one of them moved to... Uh, uh, another country, one of them moved to another country, one of them became a CEO of huge um, multinational corporation, one of them actually became a competitor. But the problem is that when they left, the knowledge didn't stay in the company. The knowledge left together with them. Think about how to become less dependent on your talents. How to become... Um, how to help these talents share their knowledge and uh, expertise while they are in your companies. As we talked in our previous class, talents are not loyal very much, usually. They are loyal to, you, uh, to their clients. They, they have horizontal loyalty, not vertical loyalty. They are very much uh, loyal to their partners. They are very much loyal to their clients. They are very much loyal to their professional ethics. They are very much loyal to um, their expertise, but they don't belong to anybody, just by definition. They just don't understand how to belong to this organization or that. They work for this organization for a while, and then they might move to another organization. How to keep this knowledge inside? Think about this. How to establish this um, system which can help share this data, share this knowledge? Building in common context with all the participants with the framework for um, evaluation. When, uh, so in many organizations, especially state organizations and large uh, private companies, we have really well established performance appraisal procedure. Uh, Look at this uh, criteria of this procedure. Usually it's about your own job, your own performance how you did, how you, you know, develop yourself, da-da-da. 
is one of these criterion um, about sharing knowledge or not? For instance, if one uh, employee is very much productive, it's a great employee, but keeps all his uh, knowledge and expertise for himself, and another is always ready to help everybody, is always ready to share his knowledge or his you know, data or his findings, does it somehow affect to their um, evaluation? Do you keep this under control and try to uh, motivate people to share this data? Think about this. Sometimes organization unconsciously uh, and deliberately uh, establish the rules when it's more when people understand that it's wise to keep it for yourself because when you share this it's not your uh, it's not your competency anymore it's everybody's competence so you're not unique why organization should keep you at the same time so think how to motivate people to share to uh, to become a part of the system instead of just being an actor who possess this knowledge. And uh, these procedures, as I told before, must be not just in a kind of declaration of let's share this knowledge, let's be good people. No, it must be um, it must be written down in some procedures, in some rules, in some practices, norms, performance evaluation, etc. So it must become a part of your everyday activity. For instance, in your uh, department, how often you have meetings which are devoted to sharing the knowledge? A year. How often? How many times a month you gather you uh, stay together and gather all your findings. People are happy to share their expertise very often because they're proud of themselves and they want to show their own expertise, but nobody asked. Think about this. And uh, the final, um, the final kind of definition of knowledge uh, organization is uh, how it happened and you see collaboration is in the center without collaboration nothing works but again collaboration must be supported with managerial procedures uh, communities of practice because people uh, have to have the shared understanding what uh, this organization does again uh, referen uh, reference to my uh, thought class about simple rules, about kind of establishing what we do, how we do, and what we don't do, uh, etc. So this is about um, establishing common um, base for everybody. Coaching, mentoring, coaching, mentoring, and uh, during the coaching, mentoring, and again, as I told, both parties um, both parties increase their knowledge. Training, e-learning is a part of knowledge organization and browsing and discovery as a process of um, the process of our job. And again, if you remember the simple rules as a, as a uh, process of managing people, it's how people learn. They jump to the opportunities, they try this and they bring back this knowledge give them this chance.